Hello out there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Power of Story podcast. I am Taj Deshaun, Vice President of Self Publishing 30 Days. And I'm here today with a very special guest, a good friend of mine who I've had the pleasure of connecting with over the past really couple of years, Mr. Emmanuel Myatt. Before Emmanuel gets rolling, because he has a great story that I really want to dive into and talk about everything he's doing with his company, I'm going to just introduce you to this man. Emmanuel is an experienced founder with 16 plus years of entrepreneurship and management experience who loves working on community building projects. And he is the founder and CEO of SocialAim.co. He's also the ultimate super fan of his wife and his children. And his mission is to be an example of talent and creativity put to use and passion intensely pursued while helping others do the same. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Uh, and thanks for the energy, man. I'm I'm grabbing some of that right now. That was awesome, brother. Thank you. <laughs> hey, man, I, I got a lot of energy because I'm excited for people to learn about what you're doing with Social Lane. Uh, mm -hmm. Social, like, before we dive into the story, because I want to hear the full origin story and all that, too, I just want to let everybody know, before I came across Emmanuel, and we, we came across each other about a year or two ago, I had never heard the term social entrepreneurship before. So I'm sure you're going to get into it, Emmanuel, but before we talk right. about social land, can you talk about what that term, where that came from and what social mm -hmm. entrepreneurship means to you? Man, great question. Great question. You know what? And um, it, it, it means it means so much in terms of just uh, just being able to contribute to making something better, you know, and starting with and I, I've been a huge a uh, huge believer. And also just like you, it took me a while, although I've been um, in business, uh, you know, started my first business since I was in high school. It took me a while to really learn uh, what social entrepreneurship is and also how to, uh, the role that we play in our, in our ecosystem, in our communities, right? And making things better, especially specific problems uh, that, uh, that, that we can address, right? And and, and really, that, that's what it means to me, being able to, to personally, directly or indirectly contribute to, to social, economic, or environmental problems that you care about, right? Because since, since we all can have that footprint, directly or indirectly, and I think it's, uh, it's a huge bonus for us to see it from that point of view understand what that contribution can look like and also see how you can uh, make a living, right? Solving problems and creating a business, especially if you're, if, if you have that entrepreneurial mindset. Hmm. That's a great point, man. And, and what is it that kind of, what is it that uh, brought you to the point where you wanted to bring hmm. these two worlds together of being an entrepreneur and having a social impact on, like you said, there's many different areas that you, that social aim covers and addresses as far as social entrepreneurship. Hmm. But what is it that sparked it inside of you to be like, I want to bring these two worlds together of social impact and entrepreneurship. How did you see that vision? And then what made that come together for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it's like, um, it, it's always been around, but I had never known like uh, growing up being in business, I've always thought about the idea of, okay, you're building a business. You have to be profitable, right? You're going to be, um, in pursuit of profit, in pursuit of getting a market into the, into the marketplace, regardless of the effects that it may have on the marketplace, right? So thinking more and more about that, because I've always thought about uh, how do I create impact? Because, you know, I, uh, I come from a very humble background. So I've always thought about impact because I, because I've thought of all of the impact that other people have had on my life that kind of changed things around for me and my family and my environment. Uh, so I've always been thinking about, you know, how do I create that impact? How do I create that kind of impact in somebody else's life? And how do I help improve uh, neighborhoods or communities and then eventually impact other pe people's lives the same way that my life has been um, impacted but then see, seeing the opportunity that you can marry that with uh, projects and entrepreneurship ventures that kind of lit the light bulb for me right in terms of man so this is social entrepreneurship so this is this is exactly what I want to do mm, that's awesome man you said you started your first business in high school what was that what business what type of yeah. business was that man um, it was a car wash business man uh, <laughs> A good, uh, 
a good friend of mine, uh, his mom had a van and we, uh, on the weekend, we borrowed a van and, uh, and then would ran out like a vacuum at Home Depot. Uh, and yeah, and you know, hit up everyone we knew. And even, uh, I think, I, I think even some of the teachers in school and, and yeah, it was good weekend money, bro. And that, that turned the light on. Cause I had read a book by, uh, Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor, uh, Poor Dad and talking about different areas of society. And if you want to do different things, here are some things you, you should uh, start doing. So I started thinking of entrepreneurship right away. And you're like, you know what, this is what we can do. I, and that turned on a light bulb to me. And it was a long time ago, never looked back. That's awesome, man. That's amazing that <laughs> at such a young age, you were able to read that book and it just kind of sparked you to go out there and start applying that knowledge immediately. You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. think that makes for a great story and it shows that it was already in your DNA. You're not trying to start a company mm -hmm. or be an entrepreneur now because it's the cool thing to do. You've been doing this, you know? And even right. you with uh, with uh, washing cars, that's a form of social entrepreneurship, man. People need the cars clean, so you're right, doing right. a service. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I love it. And then before, I really want to, I think it's safe at this point for you to kind of tell everybody what social aim mm -hmm. is. I want to hear about your journey mm -hmm. leading up to that, you know, mm -hmm. in between the time where you were doing car wash, washing cars on the weekend in high school and, and founding social aim. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to hear that journey, but can you just tell everybody what social aim is and mm -hmm. what the mission is behind the company? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, so we, it, it, it's, um, I call it a community that we are building, but I think it's so much more than that. Right. Uh, we're, we're, we're empowering, um, founders, particularly underserved founders or emerging founders to, to maximize their uh, existing experiences as well as local human capital, right, for business growth. So that's, that's what we're creating, so, which is eventually going to be, right, um, a business building community for, for entrepreneurs. Like, for example, you and I, right, we may, we may be brand new to an industry or we or, or we building a business for impact, and uh, we may we may lack certain resources. But one thing that we're not lacking is our own experiences, our point of views, the skills that we already bring to the table, right? And we're not lacking it. We're not lacking that, and and we're not lacking the human capital, right? That we can put to use. So it's really creating that environment so we can leverage that and help each other as, and we, you know, we can leverage that as the business growth resource that we need. And we think it's more than enough. And we, and we specifically felt like, Hey, you know, we can build a platform that, that can work for, for someone like, like myself who, who may feel underserved or uh, who may have limited access to uh, not quite limited access, but, but don't have all the resources. Right may have challenges to launch a business. So that's what socialm.co is, is really getting, facil facilitating that, uh, uh, that environment and, and getting us to work together more. Mm, that's amazing, man. And it's powerful and it's been great to see you over the past year or two, really just mm -hmm. the growth that you've actually had. Because it's one thing, you know, to have this idea, but it's another thing entirely for you to actually have you know, assemble the team around you who's helping the movement go forward and build a community of social entrepreneurs and actually providing mm -hmm. resources for, for social entrepreneurs. What, what has that process been like for you just building social aim and getting it from where it started, which was just an idea to getting it to where it is now where you're actually building a community and having that impact that you saw? Man, it's, it's been a great process. It's been fun. It's been challenging. Uh, it's still challenging, but it's, it, it, it's fun seeing it come to life, seeing, seeing that you can, you know, it, you can count on your peers, you can count on feedback, you can count on uh, experiences to actually build something, right? From idea to, to, to prototype, to, to implementation, and then to, to now have a living, breathing company and, and other people working with you to, to, to help you grow that company. So we actually, we <laughs> you know how they say, you know, uh, you got to drink the Kool-Aid, right? If you're going to make a Kool-Aid. And, and it, so we're drinking our own Kool-Aid and that's what the experience has been like. So exactly the whole process that we're, we're, we're helping entrepreneurs in terms of creating resources, right? Within ourselves and leveraging each other's, uh, each other to build, to build companies is exactly what we've done, what got us here. And, and it's almost like, uh, you know, 
seeing that and, and making that process duplicatable. So, so that's, that's kind of been that experience and I'm still in the middle of it. And it's also, it's, you know, every day I'm like, oh man, I can't believe this is happening. And, 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 and I can't believe all of the early results that, that we're seeing entrepreneurs getting, getting out of that. So it's, it's a great experience. It, and I'm, you know, looking forward to continuing seeing how it's evolving. Right. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's the great part about it is that as much as you're leaving a, a trail of breadcrumbs for mm -hmm. the entrepreneurs of tomorrow to follow, you're still a part of the process. So you're in there with the trenches, with every in the trenches with everybody who's a part of the community, still learning and growing and collaborating yourself, and you're the one who built the platform. You know that's the that's the best part about it to me. Yeah. And so you know, aside from from my role at Self Publish in 30 Days, you know, I also have a business where I work with retired athletes. You know, coaching transitioning athletes, and just me being a part of the social land community. I've been able to gather so much and get so much insight and been able to collaborate with other entrepreneurs, even through the content that you put out. It's just so powerful, man, because every time, you know, you put a, you put a video or you have a live event or the newsletter comes over, it's like, man, I'm in this, I'm not in this thing by myself. There's other people growing and looking to collaborate. And, and that's, a, that's been one of the many benefits for me for being a part of the community. Um, and for anybody listening who, you know, it's thinking about, you know, I want to look into social aim. I want to see what's going on with them. What are they up to? What are some mm -hmm. of the benefits that a, a rising or even an aspiring entrepreneur can expect um, when they come in the door and join the social aim community? Awesome. I, yeah, great, great question. You know, it, it coming in, I think immediately, you know, that you have, you, 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 you have a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, right? Social entrepreneurs, people who, who are thinking about, um, impact who are thinking about building a business that can create the impact that uh, that that they want in their life. So so you know you have that um, that that business building community. And um, one of the our new product that we just launched, right, is, is, uh, which is a service subscription, is called Clutch. So it's there to kind of provide that roadmap and and guide for entrepreneurs. And that is also again just just how we're uniquely designing a process to, to, to help more entrepreneurs work with each other, right? So with that immediately, you know, you um, founders can have the option to create an accountability partner, right? And, and meet with someone one-on-one -on -one each, each month and kind of talk about their, their businesses and help each other create, um, solve problems. And, uh, and, and part of that gives, it gives you access to creators block, um, and you know that's basically a very creative session where where we put our ideas together based on feedback from the community. The whole community is based on feedback, right? So so you coming in also gives you the opportunity to to bring your challenges to to the table and bring some of the things that uh, you're going through uh, within your business. So so we can be aware of that. So we can so we can f facilitate how we can help you get answers to to that. And that's what. Um, sessions like creators block, uh, does, does for you, right. Which is part of our free service, uh, with our clutch, sub, clutch business subscription. So taking part of that, we just launched, we facilitated our very first one, uh, last week. It was awesome. Right. And the, uh, simple challenge was, uh, how can, uh, new, new founders, um, come up with marketing strategies, right. To, to, to grow their business starting out. Uh, knowing that we're going to be on the budget. Our goal was to come up with like three to five um, solutions. And then, you know, we, we all showed up um, knowing very little in terms of uh, what we wanted to solve. And in just about an hour, we came up with 11 different solutions that could be implemented right away. Uh, wow. Yeah. So kind of things like that, right? And uh, how we're leveraging, facilitating different ways to help each other and, and, uh, accelerate that process mm, that's amazing man and one thing i forgot to ask you earlier just for clarification mm -hmm. you know what what are some examples of like social entrepreneurship you know as far as people who are already involved in social aim and collaborating and giving feedback and then mm -hmm. what are some what are some areas that because i know there's you have several different areas that different categories that you mm -hmm. go into um that are considered you know social entrepreneurship what, what are those categories mm -hmm. uh from your perspective yeah so what we, what we do in the beginning, like what, because there's already a framework, right? I'm not sure if, um, 
we when when you look at the uh, United Nations um, sustainable development goals, that really sets a framework for for anyone that's kind of new to sh social entrepreneurship. You can you can you can refer to to that, and that uh, that's basically a framework that outlines all of the different areas of uh, of need for society and the world. Right? It's right now. I think it. So there's like 17 of them. Every 15 years, it's uh, revised based on what's what's um, what's more important at the time, or or um, you know, it, it, and all of these areas talk about uh, um, uh, um, um, food uh, food security, poverty, water and sanitation, quality education, right, social injustice. Uh, so so you can kind of refer to that. It's called the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, mm -hmm. So we refer to that as as a place to start. But really, you know, you can address what you feel is is uh, is a challenge to you. Uh, growing up, let's say, you know, if you grew up, grew up in a neighborhood and you felt like, um, you know, income inequality, right, isn't isn't just so you can you can address that or gender equality uh or gender inequality right so it's it's a it it can be as personal as you want or or as or as open as you would like in terms i don't know if that kind of answers your question in terms of what to refer to when you're thinking about social entrepreneurship right no that actually answers the question perfectly because what mm -hmm. you're saying is there's on a global level there's all these things like you said sanitation and you know all these types of things that affect the global population but mm -hmm. you can be a social entrepreneur just like you said taking care of your neighborhood you know right. whatever that looks like so when when you hear Emmanuel talk about you know social entrepreneurship you don't necessarily have to think of it as you're going to be someone who changes the world overnight you can just start locally in your neighborhood in your community with a group of people that you identify mm -hmm. with you know prime example me with my business mm -hmm. working with former athletes that's I'm a former athlete, so I'm helping that group of people. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. a global impact I'm having, but I'm having an impact on on a specific group of people, which falls into the category of social entrepreneurship, like you said. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome, man. It, you're you're already doing so many of like so many amazing things with the community. You got so much going on. So many athletes or so many entrepreneurs are being served by it. What is the future? Where do you see social aim? Mm -hmm going in the future like the immediate future and just long term what are we looking at yeah well you know it, it, when you think of uh impact right that we want to uh create what i think we we see ourselves evolving because we're 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 still growing and we're taking feedback from our users to so we can continue growing growing the company and growing the growing the the community to better to intend better serve our, our users we see we see a collaborative network that's 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 constantly working with each other and helping and helping each other solve solve problems and, and maximizing impact right mm -hmm. uh and when you talk about social entrepreneurship you want to you want to lead with impact meaning that is it measurable impact how you know how are you doing it how how is that making uh uh how is that being impactful right and to and to and to what you're doing who is it how is it making the people's lives better and how how is it making it more s sustainable so 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 that's kind of where we see the future of the company is is helping um entrepreneurs particularly emerging entrepreneurs and underserved entrepreneurs to be more self-sustainable right and being able to to solve their own problems amongst each other and using their existing experiences. I think we, we want to see more of that. Uh, and that's what we're looking to create because a lot of access may be there, but we may not know exactly. Uh, a lot of us don't know exactly how to maximize that or how to put that to use. Right. Like you said, we talked about me, uh, my first business being a car wash business, right. That may be a completely different experience. And, and now, uh, I'm I'm in the tech industry, but how do I put that experience to use over here, right? Because um, we we a lot of times may discount different experiences that uh, that may seem totally apart, but in reality, it may have a lot to do with a brand new experience uh, um, 
that that you're building right so it's being able to maximize all all of your existing resources that's what we want to create the type of community that can uh em, empower uh entrepreneurs to do that wow yeah that's huge man that's huge i mean just that word access that you brought up like once you said that just light bulb started going off because i mean i already i think i knew that subconsciously mm -hmm. But I think just hearing you say that kind of reaffirmed mm -hmm. my mind that, man, that's what you're really doing with social lane is giving access. And, mm -hmm. and most of probably more importantly is having that collaboration too, which mm -hmm. is huge. access and collaboration. Like the value of those two things alone in entrepreneurship, you can't, it can't be stated enough because at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of people, including myself and up until recently, I feel like a lot of people do feel like, they have to go at it alone, you know? And I think sometimes collaboration, people get like collaboration and competition mixed up, right? Where mm -hmm. they feel like, oh, well, these people are gonna try to steal my ideas or, you know, versus like everybody's trying to win, especially if everyone's on a mission to change the world and have an impact on the world by being a, a social entrepreneur, collaboration is only gonna take you to that next level. And like you said, you, you know, you were in the tech industry, you're still are in the tech industry. There's little bits and pieces that you can pull from all these different industries and that's where the collaboration comes in so that you're getting a mastermind it's essentially it's mm -hmm. a mastermind is what we're talking about a mastermind right. of people on a mission not just trying to make money of course we all need to make money but you have created a mastermind of people who are earning a living building a life for themselves by changing the world by having an impact on a community and um, that's a beautiful thing man that's why i wanted to have you on the show just so you could come share about that like I said, I've benefited tremendously from being connected with you and being a part of your community. Um, so if people want to learn more and, and join the community so they can collaborate and mm -hmm. give and receive feedback, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you and for them to, to get in touch with uh, or become part of the social land community? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, um, log on to our website, uh, www.socialm.co uh, and, and, and just sign up, right? We, we have... Um, a lot of information on there. The Social Times uh, is is um, our latest publication, right? Our community pub publication, just kind of avenue for for us to to be be able to share each other's stories and give each other that spotlight experience, right? That cover story experience, and and it and it kind of draws back to to how much we can do amongst each other and how we can uh, give that uh, um, give each other that that experience and. Uh, you know, check that out. Give us some feedback. We really value feedback, especially at this early stage. I think that's one of the best things anyone can do is, 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 is check out what we're doing and, and tell us, tell us how well you like it or, or how much you don't like it. What don't you like about it? Right. And, and if you don't like something, how you think it can be better? I think that's one of the biggest things um, anyone can do. Right. And being honest and sharing the ugly truth, uh, because we know we we don't want to hide ugliness, right? It's uh, and we want to find the beauty in it and not hide it. Uh, so so I think um, doing that, and I'm on LinkedIn. I love connecting with other people. Um, you know, it's my first and last name, Emmanuel Neal, and I'm I'm always happy to connect. And uh, because you know we're we're creators, and that's where creating starts, right? Just by connecting with each other and leveraging our collaborative power. So. Wow. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for coming on and, and sharing your story and talking about everything that you're up to. I'm super excited to even be a part of your network, man. Like I said, just you changed my whole perspective the first time we connected a few years ago. So, and I love what you said for everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, don't overlook the fact that Emmanuel just <laughs> said, when you reach out, feel free to give me some feedback too. Do you hear the feedback coming back again? Yeah. A lot of people say, Hey, reach out to me, hit me up. You know, like this man's like, Hey, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. I think it takes a level of humility and like you said, just being willing to collaborate and accept feedback for you to even say something like that, man. Like you really li live and breathe this stuff, man. So thank you again for coming on. Mm -hmm. This has been the Power of Story podcast. Reach out to Emmanuel. Go to socialaim.co. Check out what he's doing. Join the great community. You will see me in the community. <laughs> I, I was in the newsletter. I was a featured yeah. entrepreneur. You know, not to brag, not to toot my own horn, but, you know, go check it out. Join the community. And until no, next you time. Oh. Uh... Yeah. No, I, I mean, one of the, the things I really want to share, man, and why I think it's so powerful is because when I talked about how motivating each other and being there, because remember when I reached out to you, like the very first time when I was putting this uh, community together, just, just getting initial feedback, just to kind of see, 
Because um, a couple of years ago, when I reached out for the first time, you know, that was part of my research, right? And seeking out different people that I think, you know, may or may not be interested in, 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 in what I'm doing. And this was just really like an idea. I had, I had a pitch deck presentation just to kind of show you and everything like that. But if you see the website wasn't what it was today or anything like that. So all of that build up and, and, and that's how powerful that is, right? Because when I reached out to uh, Taj, who I knew was a former athlete, and I knew that, you know, because, you know, I'm a former athlete myself a long time ago that didn't play at that level. But, but I, I wanted to seek that kind of feedback from different stakeholders within our community. So it was powerful you being able to kind of check this out and give him feedback and me knowing your level of interest and why you were interested and also hearing your story, right, and, and how you helping people find, find passion and how that is important to you. So all of that was uh, important feedback, but the other step to that is how to take that feedback and use that to to build what you're building. And and these are and that's what we're we're not just showing by example, but helping other entrepreneurs do that very same process because we all have thoughts and experiences. But how can you leverage that and do something with it? So, but I, but I wanted mm. to say that and thank you again. You know, all that was part of the process. Man, well said, brother. You can drop the mic on that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can drop the mic on that one, man. There you go. Leading by example. And you are, you are for sure doing that, man. Like, that's what I love about the community the most is that you're not just in there talking about, all right, everybody collaborate and give feedback. You're leading yeah. the charge by saying, look at me collaborating and giving feedback. Everybody come in here and do the same thing because we can all help uplift each other. You know, what's that, that old sure. saying? A rising tide raises all ships. Um, yep. And that's what you're doing, man. So, Thank you again for coming on The Power of Story. I know you and I, you're going to have many, many conversations after this one. But uh, until next time, man, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the invite. All right, brother. Take care. <laughs> All right. <laughs>